Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. This is the Verse by Verse Bible Study. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your wonderful, marvelous love for us. Father, we thank you for your great love for us. Father, you are our strength. Father, you are the strength of our life. Father, we set our eyes upon you. Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation in your word, your will and your law. Father, we thank you so much. We are rooted and built up in our Lord Jesus, established in the faith, strong and vigorous in the word of God that we've been taught, abounding with thanksgiving in the faith of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. We are growing in the grace and knowledge and faith of my Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray you grant us word in due season. Father, we pray you grant us answers and solutions. And Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal those who need healing right now. Father, and to meet the needs of people. Father, and satisfy their desires. Father, we pray for your comfort, your strength and your peace upon people. Father, we pray for your strength to overcome, your strength to move forward, your strength to prosper and succeed and triumph. Father, we thank you for your great strength for your people. Father, you are our God. We lean on you. We trust in you. And Father, we pray you keep your people as the apple of your eye. Father, we pray you preserve their going out and coming in. Father, we pray you preserve them from all evil. Father, we pray you protect them from all kinds of pestilences and sicknesses and diseases. Father, we pray no weapon formed against them will prosper, and they refute every tongue that rises against them in judgment. Father, we thank you for your glorious help for your people. Father, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, your love endures forever. Father, your faithfulness endures forever. Father, we thank you so much for your marvelous, marvelous love for us. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Our God is good. Our God is wonderful. And our God is awesome. Hallelujah. Meditate on the greatness of our God. Meditate on his awesome power. Meditate on his ability. Hallelujah to Jesus. These are the kind of things you should fill your heart and mind with. Right? They actually will benefit you big time in your life. Now, the Bible teaches us about how God has given us this ability to choose. And one of the primary things that we should um, watch concerning our choices is what we choose to think upon and what we fill, what we store in our heart and in our mind. Hallelujah. We want to uh, watch that and examine that. And we want to store things that will benefit us. One of the things that will greatly benefit you in your life is um, thinking about the greatness of God Almighty, His wonderful power, His great ability and His awesome, awesome, awesome Almighty power. Think upon that. Consider His miracles. Ponder upon His uh, works. Hallelujah. If you will do that, it, it will help you when you are in a tight spot or when you need God to do something big for you. Hallelujah. It doesn't always have to be some kind of a, a, a negative situation. Sometimes you, need a, you are in a positive situation, you know. See, for example, Joshua, he needed help. You know, he, he is winning the war. Right? He, he, he has um, victory over his adversaries. God has delivered his uh, enemies into his hands. But he needed help. The kind of help that he needed is impossible for any human to provide. He needed extra daylight. <laughs> and um, so he looked up to God and he said, um, let the sun stand still and the moon stand still. And the Bible says God hearkened to him. Hallelujah. See, the reason Joshua was able to ask something like that and believe for it and receive it is because, see, he understood the greatness of God. He understood the awesome power of God. He understood, he knew that God is El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. See, that's what enabled him to 
pray such a bold prayer and receive answer hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so when you have a little bit of time just open the bible go through the miracles of god study the creation study the various miracles god has done in the old testament and in the new testament think upon them ponder them consider some of the things god has done in your life in answer to your prayers hallelujah think about them meditate upon them hallelujah these are the kind of thoughts you want in abundance in your heart and in your mind hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right let's go to galatians chapter 3 let's read from verses 6 to 9 even as abraham believed god and it was accounted to him for righteousness know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of abraham and the scripture foreseeing that god would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful abraham hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so Uh, this is the third message in this uh, con- in these uh, concerning this particular passage verses 6 to 9 and uh, we have been uh, looking at how god even before the new covenant even in the old testament times before the law was given god justified abraham by faith god called abraham as righteous because of his faith right so uh, this is not a new concept that was introduced in the new testament no this is something god has already done we also looked at even the old testament prophets spoke about the righteousness by faith hallelujah uh, people like david uh, spoke about that in psalms hallelujah and um, we also looked at how god planned this right from the beginning when abraham was called god already spoke to him about the gentile people being blessed through him in genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 let's look at that briefly we will uh, rehearse these verses and then move forward in uh, genesis chapter 12 verse 2 and 3 I'll make of thee a great nation this is talking about Israel and I'll bless thee and make your name great and thou shall be a blessing and I'll bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed now the final promise which is in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed the bible declares in galatians that this is the gospel hallelujah because it includes all the uh, families of the earth all nations of the earth and uh, they were going to be blessed in abraham how through abraham israel and through israel david and through david jesus and through jesus the whole world hallelujah this has been the plan of god from the very beginning you see god announced it to the father of the jewish people right <laughs> and the interesting thing is God from the very beginning not only called him as the father of uh, the Jewish people he is also he also called him as the father of many nations hallelujah basically the father of all the families of the earth hallelujah in genesis chapter 15 we looked at it how god said to abraham from verse 4 let's read genesis 15 4 and 5 behold the word of the lord came unto him saying this shall not be your hair but he that shall come forth out of your own bowels shall be your heir and he brought him forth the broad and said look now toward heaven and tell the star or count the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall your seed be in romans chapter 4 verses 16 to 17 the bible clearly tells us that uh, when god said so shall your seed be showing him the stars um he was talking about both the physical seed and also the spiritual seed those who came, those who were called the seed of abraham because they came out of his body and those who were called the seed of abraham because they believed like abraham did and they put their faith in the seed of abraham who is our lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah to jesus 
and um, if you haven't listened to the previous messages i encourage you to listen to them because we go in much more detail concerning these verses right and it will bless you immensely hallelujah here i'm just uh, reviewing a little bit so that you know um, if somebody is just joining in they won't be lost hallelujah all right now let's go to genesis 17 um look at verse 4 here god is making a covenant with abraham for the purpose of his kingdom now in this particular covenant it was not so much uh, for abraham abraham had everything you could ask for he had a son he had great riches he had a beautiful wife he had great business he, he has been living for a long time and at this point of time he's 99 years old so he, he got everything a man could ask for right hallelujah so this is for the this particular covenant this chapter if you go and study it god initiated this covenant primarily for the kingdom purpose not for uh, abraham as such right hallelujah and uh, so keep these thoughts in mind and let's read verse 4 as for me behold my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations notice god didn't say father of israel alone no he said a father of many nations hallelujah and um, go with me to romans chapter 4 romans chapter 4 let's read verse 16 and 17 again therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise but might be sure to all the seed underline that phrase all the seed not to that only which is of the law talking about the descendants physical descendants of abraham who are under the law but to that also which is of the faith of abraham talking about gentile believers who have placed their faith in jesus hallelujah who is the father of us all both the physical descendants and also the spiritual descendants hallelujah as it is written i have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even god who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope notice this the bible says that abraham exercised faith for these things see he exercised his faith he believed god when he said so shall your seed be he believed god when god said you are the father of many nations he believed god when god said in thee all the families of the earth will be blessed see so abraham did not just believe for god to bring forth israel out of him he also believed god to bring the church out of him right the people who have placed their faith in jesus and through jesus have become the seed of abraham he believed for those people also in other words he believed for people like you and me who have become the seed of abraham through our faith in jesus hallelujah abraham exercised faith both for his physical descendants as well as the spiritual descendants hallelujah who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall your seed be hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so we have established that uh, any every believer who has put their faith in jesus and made jesus the lord of their life is a seed of abraham right we also spoke about how it is more important in the eyes of god to walk in the ways of abraham than just be a physical seed see when somebody was a physical seed right but did not walk in the ways of abraham he didn't sit well with god he was not happy with those people see isaac had two sons esau and jacob right esau was a godless fellow and the blessing of abraham did not rest upon him even though he is a physical seed of abraham now he did receive some natural blessings but the covenant blessings no it rested upon jacob and if you go and study the old testament you will notice that uh, even though you are a seed of abraham the blessings just don't come and sit upon you automatically right you have to walk in the ways of abraham if you look about I mean if you look at the descendants of David and now David is again a man who received great promises from God like Abraham and um 
द ब्लैसिंग ऑफ एब्राहम आई एम सॉरी द ब्लैसिंग प्रोमिस टू डेविड वर्क माइंडली अपॉन दोज हु वॉक्ड इन द वेज ऑफ डेविड हाल लो ये एंड वेन समबडी डिड नॉट वॉक इन द वे ऑफ डेविड they did not enjoy the blessings of Ab- uh, david hallelujah hallelujah to jesus we also looked at the teachings of our lord jesus and uh, john the baptist to impress this point in the eyes of god when somebody walks in the ways of abraham right god sees them god makes them a partaker of the blessing of abraham we looked at the centurion who exercised great faith like abraham and god said while talking about him right he spoke to the people of israel saying people from the east and west will come uh, right to the uh, kingdom of heaven let's read those verses i think it's better go with me to matthew 8 hallelujah to jesus look at this verse 11 and i say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with abraham isaac and jacob in the kingdom of heaven when the bible talks about sitting down with abraham right this is covenant talk it's talking about how these people have become partakers of what belongs to abraham isaac and jacob right but the children right children of the kingdom shall be cast out into the outer darkness why children of kingdom talking about the physical descendants of abraham at this point of time they were the only uh, group which was called the children of the kingdom right but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness why because even though they were physical descendants they did not walk in the ways of abraham hallelujah hallelujah to jesus now il- to illustrate this particular truth i want to look at two great examples from the old testament uh rehab and ruth today we will focus on rehab hallelujah i want to look at some new testament verses that talk about rehab and then we will go to the old testament and see what the bible teaches us about rehab first of all let's go to hebrews 11 hallelujah Hebrews 11. Now you uh, would know about this chapter, this great chapter about faith. Hallelujah. Great teaching on faith. Entire chapter is about faith. And um, here the Bible talks about great men of faith. Right? So much so people describe this particular chapter as the hall of fame of faith. Now you know in any sports, uh, uh, different people are inducted into the hall of fame. Right? And the people who... Uh, get into this uh, hall of fame are those who are great in their particular sports right particular sport and there is a hall of fame for tennis there is a hall of fame hall of fame for cricket a hall of fame for basketball and so on right and um, so this is described as the hall of fame for faith and you see great people like abel Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Moses and one verse uh, Joseph, right? Uh and then there is a very interesting character mentioned here. Hallelujah. Rahab. God included Rahab the harlot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> with the giants of faith in the bible here he is talking about the great faith acts right of, of the most notable saints in the bible right and uh, he chose to include rehab in that list hallelujah this is not um, an ordinary uh, honor even people like samson david the prophets gideon and barak just get a mention right their acts are not described in detail but god chose to give uh, describe rehab's faith act in detail hallelujah look at verse um, chapter 11 verse 31 by faith the harlot rehab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace so we hear we see here that god is um, p- 
portraying Rahab's faith as an example for us. Right alongside Noah, Enoch, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Sarah. Hallelujah. That that's some level of honor that God bestowed upon this woman. Hallelujah to Jesus. And she's a Gentile. She's from Jericho. She's not a descendant descendant of Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Keep that thought in mind, okay? Um let's go to James. In James chapter 2, here we see James, the brother of our Lord Jesus, is is teaching um, about faith, right? And he is teaching how faith without works is dead. So first he begins to teach about Abraham. Look at verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Now when he says works here, he is not talking about the, the works of the law. He is talking about our faith inside expressing itself in actions. Right? Hallelujah. See, Abraham believed that God, Abraham believed all the promises God spoke about Isaac. God said, in Isaac your seed shall be called. Right? And God had spoken some wonderful things. Right? And uh, all those things were going to come to pass through Isaac. Abraham knew that. Right? And here is God asking him to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. So Abraham came to a conclusion that um, since God doesn't lie and God doesn't alter his covenant, right? even if he offered Isaac as a sacrifice, God will raise him up because uh, the things that were spoken about Isaac have not been fulfilled yet. So with that faith, Abraham offered Isaac. See, he believed what God had spoken. And he expressed his faith by being willing to offer Isaac. Right? That's what here the Bible is saying. Uh, that's what the Bible means when it says works. Right? It's talking about faith expressing itself in works. This is not talking about the works of the law. Hallelujah. Okay, verse 22. See, is thou how faith wrought with his works? Hallelujah. You know, some translations would use the word corresponding actions. Right? Actions that uh, correspond to what we believe. See, the woman with the issue of blood believed that if she touched the hem of the garment of our Lord Jesus, she would be healed. And she acted upon it. She did not just sit in her house, in her house and say, If I just touched the hem of his garment, I would be healed. Oh, but alas, I cannot go. If I go there, they will stone me. I can't go. I can't go. Oh, woe oh, to me. No, she was not doing that. No, she actually got up. <laughs> In spite of the danger for her life, she went and touched the hem of her garment. I mean, hem of the garment of our Lord Jesus. You see, she, her faith produced corresponding actions. Hallelujah. She believed that if she would touch the hem of the garment of our Lord Jesus, she would be healed and then she acted on it and went and touched the hem of the garment of our Lord Jesus and immediately virtue came out of Jesus and healed her. Hallelujah! So that's what you mean, uh, that's what I mean when we say uh, corresponding actions. And uh, verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Now, if he had stopped here, th that would be a great teaching, you know. But James decided to add another person as an example for faith, right? Being completed through faith-inspired action. Hallelujah. Verse 25, Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified made righteous by works? when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. So notice again how the Bible, the Holy Spirit, is joining Rahab with Abraham time and again, time and again. Right? And particularly concerning their faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. There is a 
beautiful passage Matthew chapter 1 right if you look at the first 17 verses it talks about the genealogy of our lord jesus christ according to the flesh right the physical genealogy the spiritual genealogy is very short jesus the only begotten son of god the father right but the physical genealogy is a little longer that right here matthew the holy ghost through matthew is giving us this particular genealogy to prove to us that jesus is the christ the son of david the son of abraham see two people received promises concerning the messiah in the old testament one is abraham the other one is david god promised abraham that the christ would be his seed and god also promised david that his uh, christ the messiah would would be in his line would be his son hallelujah his descendant so uh, in order for jesus christ to be genuine he has to be a seed of abraham and the seed of david so this genealogy is given to us by the holy spirit to prove the fact that jesus is a direct descendant of abraham and david hallelujah all right then so in this uh, genealogy you have the names of four women uh, three the names are mentioned for three and one is mentioned but the name is not mentioned right four women are mentioned here one is tamar the other one is uh, rahab another is ruth and the final one is uh, bachiba but the bible uh, calls her uh, the wife of uria in this particular passage hallelujah all of them have very in- interesting backgrounds hallelujah <laughs> i don't want to go into those details now let's just focus on rahab look at this um verse 4 aram begat aminadab aminadab begat nason nason begat salmon now these are not ordinary folks they are the princes of the tribe of judah go and study exodus and leviticus and numbers you will find the names aminadab and nason as the rulers of uh, judah right this is the uh, royals of uh, the Ju- tribe of judah hallelujah and um, nason and salmon also right same family and you can see the bible bible when it talks about boaz it calls him a mighty man of wealth right and uh, so god chose rahab and joined her into this great line right this holy genealogy of our lord jesus christ she is a moabitess i'm sorry she is a uh, canaanitess right from jericho and she um was a harlot <laughs> her past is, is is not very good but then she turned to the living god and started walking in the ways of abraham so god said i'm going to join you to the line of abraham not just abraham i'm going to join you in the line out of which king david comes not only that i'm going to join you to the line right through which the christ the messiah comes hallelujah so i want you to have these thoughts in the back of your mind when we study uh, what happened in joshua chapter 2 joshua chapter 2 Here we see Joshua like Moses sent a spies but instead of 12 he sent two right to uh, spy out the land and bring him some details so when the spies went in uh, they went to Rahab's house and they lodged there hallelujah look at verse 1 and Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly saying go view the land even Jericho and they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there and it was told the king of Jericho saying behold there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country and the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab saying bring forth the men that are come to thee which are entered into your house for they be come to search out all the country now this is a serious matter because um, 
these two people are from the enemy nation who are going to engage in an act of war against Jericho. They are spies <laughs> from a country which is at war with Jericho. Right? Rahab giving refuge to them would mean treason. Right? And that would mean death. Not just for Rahab, even for her entire household. Those days, you know, people didn't just stop with the person who committed the crime. And they would also punish the family members. Hallelujah. This would mean a sure death for Rahab. Hallelujah. And, uh, but, this woman, boldly, right, with great boldness, protected the two spies from the hands of the king of Jericho. Look at verse 4. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I'm sorry, whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them, the way to Jordan unto the fords, and as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. Now, Rahab comes up to these people who are in the roof, right, and um, she begins to say some very important things, right, and pay very close attention to this. Verse 9, she said unto the men, I know, underline that word, I know. She didn't say, I think, right, she didn't say, maybe, Right? She didn't say, I wish. Hallelujah. She didn't say, she didn't even say, I believe. She said, I know. This woman is fully persuaded concerning this truth about God. Hallelujah. She is saying, I know that the Lord has given you the land. Hallelujah. See, that's why God put her along with the Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, right, and Moses. Why? All of them believed the same thing. They all believed that God has given the land to Abraham and his descendants. Right? What did Joseph say? Right? Right before he died. See, God will visit you, right? And he will <laughs> take you back to the land which was promised to our fathers, right? What did uh, Abraham, Isaac, and uh, Jacob say? The same thing. They all believed that God has given them the land. See, she connected with Abraham. Right? In the faith. Hallelujah. Concerning what God had said. She said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. Not going to give. See, Jericho is still standing. The huge wall is still standing. She knows that her people are strong and big and mighty. And they have a well-trained army. See, these are ancient nations. They are not some uh, newly formed nation. No, and they are very good at warfare. They know how to protect a city and they know how to fight a war. Right? They are still there. Yet this woman is fully persuaded that God has given the land to Israel. Hallelujah. And let's keep reading. I want you to notice this. And that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. She is giving some inside information. <laughs> this is so in contrast to what the spies, the 12 spies, the, the 10 of them who brought the negative report told Moses, right? And the children of Israel. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. See, one of the things that God teaches his people is to remember the great works of God. Right? I think this is a good time to contrast Rahab with the first generation of the Israelites who came out of Egypt. See, what was the problem with the first generation of Israel who came out of Egypt? Right? They did not believe that God has given them the land and that uh, they could overcome the nations and inherit the land. Right? 
they said it's not possible we can't inherit it we cannot possess it those people are too big too great too mighty right here but rehab is totally <laughs> persuaded that god has given them the land and uh, these people will possess the land she is thoroughly persuaded you see the contrast if you go and study psalm 78 one of the things that god uh, particularly points out is that these people have forgotten the mighty works of god which he did in egypt right and all the things that he did for them but here is rehab remembering how god split the red sea and made a path for the israelites right the physical descendants did not walk in the faith of abraham they did not think like abraham see abraham was fully persuaded that god was able to do what he promised you see the same thing here rehab is fully persuaded that god will fulfill what he promised <coughs> hallelujah the physical descendants did not do that they were not fully persuaded at all they were in unbelief and they did not remember the mighty works of god the awesome power of god and the ability of god they did not remember that yet this heathen woman a gentile woman is remembering how god dried up the water of the red sea for the israelites when they came out of egypt hallelujah notice how the physical descendants did not walk in the ways of abraham but rehab walked in the way of abraham hallelujah and what you did unto the two kings of the amorites second part of verse 10 and what you did unto the two kings of the amorites that were on the other side jordan sihon and og whom you utterly destroyed and as soon as we heard these things our hearts did melt neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you not as far the lord your god he is god in heaven above and in earth beneath see she has understood something as she was pondering upon what god has done for um, israel right and how god is giving this land to israel she got a revelation from god almighty himself that he is the true living god who is god in heaven above and the earth beneath that's why he is able to do such mighty works hallelujah hallelujah to jesus you see this gentile heathen woman believed like abraham right walked in the ways of abraham held fast to god through personal revelation you know abraham was living among heathen people right he was living in chaldea babylon us right and god revealed himself to abraham abraham believed that god Ehova God is God in heaven and God in earth. That's why he listened to his voice and to his promised blessing and walked right out of his nation, forsook everything and followed God. See, he got a personal revelation from God. This woman Rahab, she is living among heathen people who are idolaters. Right? And she also received revelation about the God of Abraham. Nay. And she followed that revelation. She came out of Jericho. Hallelujah. See, based on all these things, he protected she protected the spies and let them go. Hallelujah. But <coughs> here's the interesting thing. After if you go and read Joshua chapter 6 verse 25 and Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had and she dwelt in Israel unto this day notice she did not walk away and go find some other heathen nation and live there no instead of going to some other nation right some heathen nation which did not know God and they live among them instead of doing that she held fast to the people of God and dwelt among them and served the living god all the days of her life 
like Abraham. Once she, he came out of it, he never turned back to Babylon. And she came out of that heathen among the heathen people. And she never went back to a heathen lifestyle again. Do you see this? See Rahab, even though she was a heathen and she was a harlot, right? She repented and changed, got a revelation about God and chose God and followed God like Abraham. And God said, you daughter are the true child of Abraham. So I'm going to join you into that holy lineage right, of the Messiah. I'm going to join you into the family of Abraham. And God gave her in marriage <laughs> to the prince of Judah, right, to the royal family of Judah. Do you see this? Hallelujah. She represents the church. Right? We, we were all heathen people. We did not know God. We were Gentiles without circumcision, without covenant. See, we heard about Jesus. We believed in our Lord Jesus. Made Jesus the Lord of our life. And we are serving Jehovah Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And we, we are... Um, Rahab is an example in the Old Testament. She is a type of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. She is like us. Did not know God. But she got a revelation about God. Chose God and held fast to God. Right? And lives for God. Lived for God. And we are living for God. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, Rahab's life proves that God values the ways of Abraham. Hallelujah. You can, even if you are a descendant of Abraham, if you don't walk in the ways of Abraham, you don't get the blessing. You see the um, first generation Israelites who came out of Egypt. Right? They were all physical descendants, but they did not walk in the ways of Abraham. Every chance they get, they said, we will go back. Right? Totally cont opposite of Abraham. Abraham, na Bible says he didn't even call to mind. But concerning these people, it says they, in their heart, they turned back to Egypt. Right? They were physical descendants, but did not walk in the ways of Abraham. So they did not inherit the blessing of Abraham. Meanwhile, here is a heathen woman. She walked in the ways of Abraham. God gave her the blessing of Abraham. Right? And joined her to the family of Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be his holy name. We will study more about this in the next message. Hallelujah. In the next message we will study about Ruth. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.